Hello, hello, everybody. This is B from Kong's R Us. Thanks for joining. It's morning for me. I'm still on the West Coast. I know it just hit afternoon for those on the East Coast. Thanks for joining. Uh, today, I will be going over a live modding session on how to install what I call my premium Starcade mod kit. So uh, for about the last year or so, people have really been asking me how all the information about modding their Star Wars Arcade went up. That's kind of how I got started. Uh, and and I'll leave links to my original tutorial that I did about a year ago. And I'm ready to do a brand new tutorial. I'm going to be updating it uh, and doing a 2020, 2021 version of modding your Star Wars Arcade 1UP because I've learned so much in the last year on how to get better at modding. And so I've created a mod kit that has all the parts and supplies that you need to mod your own Star Wars panel. And so that's what I'll be doing today. So over the next hour, I'm going to demonstrate installing my mod kit. I've actually sent out some some of these mod kits to some um, some clients last week. And so this is a, a live installation tutorial for them to follow along. So for those that are here, JQ, Bobby, thanks for joining in. Um, I'll be getting started right now. So let's go ahead and add the small PC or my side camera here. And uh, we'll make this big. So you guys can see my panel. OK, so um, first thing I'm not going to do is, is again, once you are modding your Star Wars yoke, you do need to remove the yoke itself. And then you need to drill holes into your panel. So you don't need to do all these holes here. This is like kind of my uh, measurements for installing and um, you know drilling through your panel. The way just kind of drilling tips for when you're drilling any uh, panel with a plexiglass, the way that I personally do it is um, I tape everything down with the plexiglass onto the actual board itself. And then I use a drill press. But the, the thing that you need the most to use is this. So this is the most recommended bit that I use to drill through plexiglass and through the control panel. It's called a Forstner bit. So it's a 1 and 1 eighth inch Forstner bit, or about 29 millimeters. And this gives me the cleanest cut to cut through both the plexi and the control panel at the same time. And I've used all the different types of bits. I've used a step bit. I've used a hole saw. Um, I've used a hand drill. I have a drill press. So my go-to now is a Forster bit, but I actually use a drill press to get really even holes because I do a ton of this. You don't need a drill press at all, but I do recommend a Forstner bit. Um, I think so many people have watched ETA Prime's video, which recommended a step bit. And I can't tell you the first time I used a step bit on Plexi, I cracked it. I cracked it hard. So <laughs> it is not forgiving. But like, look how clean these holes are. I mean, I have one chip here, but uh, it looks really clean. Uh, but this is just a sample of where I drill my holes for my Starcade premium kit. Um, and so the buttons I'm going to go in a second. But in terms of measuring where to put the holes, uh, just some quick measurements for those that are interested. The big red buttons that I have here, these go nine and a half inches from the bottom. And sorry, not inches, centimeters, nine and a half centimeters from the bottom and four and a half centimeters from the side. OK, so this is where I put my big red buttons. The star and coin buttons here, I had them spaced at four centimeters in and then eight centimeters in and then three centimeters from the top. So three by eight, and then three by four for these start and coin buttons. And then this is actually the analog joystick controller that needs a different bit. So this is actually a bigger hole. And so it's actually, I, I believe it's a one and one half inch hole saw that I use to make this big enough so I can fit the entire joystick through. So this is a bigger hole that I use. Um, so depending on what you have, you want to make this bigger because otherwise, if you make a hole this small, uh, you're going to have to take apart your joystick. So I recommend a bigger hole, one and one half inch hole saw if you can. Um, but this is, again, four and a half inches in and about three inches down. But that's why this hole is bigger. And then for these other buttons here that are on the control panel, uh, these are, again, I, I kind of just mark it where the where stock button is right in the center of where the graphic is. And this is the only one that's a little bit off um, where it's not directly in the center of the graphic. So these I kind of eyeball. I don't really measure them just to make sure that they fit exactly where the graphic is. Um, but that's drilling your control panel and getting it ready to install extra buttons. And again, the most common question that I get is like, do you need all these buttons on your Star Wars Arcade 1UP mod? Uh, and the short answer is no, you don't. <laughs> but it looks freaking cool. Um, so the, the standard amount of buttons that I recommend if you're going to do a mod is just the four buttons in addition to the yoke. So your yoke has four buttons already. 
you know, on your trigger, but I recommend adding at least four more. So what I do is I do two event buttons and a start and a coin button. So those eight buttons by default are, are I what I recommend as their basic number of buttons you need to do a Star Wars arcade one up mod. Um, the good thing is if you don't want to do any of this, if you want to just buy Glenn's GRS yoke, so that yoke has six buttons by default, but you can add two more buttons to it super easily. So that also has eight buttons. You can drop it in you know, whatever you want to, and you'll be set. You can get a control panel from Greg Zaker at 99 lives. So if you don't want to go through the hassle of actually drilling panels and doing all that stuff, then, you know, I definitely recommend uh, getting Glenn's GRS yoke to save you some time. And it's probably a little bit cheaper. Um, the other thing that I want to mention, if you, if you have my mod kit and you get buttons and you don't want to drill into your panel, check this out. So my good buddy, Greg Zaker from 99 lives arcade, look, he made a replica uh you know star wars panel that's already pre-drilled using his amazing cnc paint um cnc so i mean it's, it's exactly how i measure my buttons i've been working with him directly and and he pretty much uh you know put everything on um and it looks exactly kind of where it needs to go so it's, it's pretty awesome that he was able to do this and, and replicate this um so we will um i'm gonna give him a, just a little bit of feedback because like some of the holes look slightly off i was just double checking it so um it should still be okay when you use his yoke so i mean it, like as, it, as as you can see some of the holes are slightly misaligned here greg i'll get you some feedback um but other than that it looks fantastic so this is a pre-drilled um Again, CNC board from Greg Zaker at 99 Lives. He offers this on his website. So if you don't, and this is using non-plexi, it's just the uh, air release vinyl. Um, so it's on here. What's up, Deputy Van Halen? <clears throat> I'm gonna go over the buttons and everything that I'm gonna be adding in. I use square LEDs to uh, to put them into here as well. Um, so let's go over the mod kit in terms of what's included in the in in my particular mod kit and and what you would need if you wanted to do a similar mod. So. In my kit, I have several items in here. This is kind of like the power installation kit to put into your actual cabinet. Um, and I have some other tutorials on, on what to do. But this is all the buttons and all the parts that you need. Um, and the amazing, what I call, the it's the Geek Pie encoder. So we're no longer modding the Arcade 1UP using an APAC. We're using the Geek Pie, which is super awesome. And so what's everything in here? I'll show you the list of everything that I have. So um, I'll just kind of flash it on the screen so you can see the parts list. This is the parts list. There's a lot of stuff on here. So I mean, I'll go through the parts list just so you can see it. So number one is the uh, surge protector. Number two is the inlet module switch. Number three is a wire that will plug into your stock power switch and uh, pl you know plug into the surge protector so you can plug it off and on. Number four is just a, an, um, a power cable, a power uh, you know supply cable to plug into the inlet module switch. Five is a Y splitter. Number six is the power LEDs um, to power up all your LEDs. Number seven is the VS display adapter that will convert your monitor to um, HDMI. Uh, number eight is the GeekPi encoder itself. Number nine are some PCB feet that go into, you know, so that you can mount the display adapter. Number 10 is my Starcade playlist, um, which I'll go over a little bit later on. Uh, number 11 are specialized uh, JST connector cables that will connect your potentiometers from your yoke to the GeekPi. Uh, 12 I actually don't include anymore. It was wires to plug in your volume switch, but I have um, some some tips on using your stock connections uh, instead of that. 13 are just encoder wires. 13, 24, and, and 25 are all encoder wires. And then 14 through 22 are all the different buttons that I have, the, the big 60 millimeter red buttons, the square buttons, I use these chrome buttons. And 23 is the joystick, which I'll show you guys. I use a four axis basic joystick, and then I include graphics, um, buttons for the buttons. Number 18 is for the sound. So that's everything that's in the mod kit that's included. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. Some of it is like, you know, kind of customized to work and be plug and play. You could absolutely source all these parts yourself too. And I'll try to leave as many links as I can to get this. When I do my full tutorial, I'm going to be doing a full version of a new tutorial um, to show folks how to do this. I also have a basic version of the mod kit that doesn't do all the bells and whistles um, buttons uh, in the center, but it pretty much has everything out. So I have a basic mod kit and a premium market 
And if you're interested in these mod kits uh, at all, um, I have a link in the description to join my Facebook group where you can get more information on, on getting a mod kit. So that's uh, the best way to get info. And I, I post updates there all the time. So join that group if you're interested. And um, so let's get to it. Let's uh, let's before I kind of take everything apart. The first thing I actually need to do is put the yoke back together. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, check chat, see if there's any questions. And I'm going to be modding back up the control panel <clears throat> here. All right, let's go, let's do this. So we're going to install our yoke back into the panel. <clears throat> hey James, thanks for coming in. Number 17 graphics for the buttons are awesome. Did you make those? I would really like some decals for Burger Time Pepper button decals. Yeah, I actually did make them and um, they're they're pretty simple. I, I literally just print it on um, photo photo paper, so four four by six photo paper on my printer, and you know I just designed the buttons to fit. Any LED button normally has like a cap where you can just fit any type of graphic underneath, and it fits perfectly. So uh, if you want to design your own buttons, that's kind of what I did. I just uh, you know started and um, I, you know shout out to Johnny Arcade who does light up buttons, and and we uh, chatted a little bit, and he kind of gave me some some tips on creating button graphics, and I kind of just went from there. <clears throat> so you can absolutely create your own button designs fairly easily. If you know you can Photoshop something, just grab an image, size it so that it fits right underneath, and then you can get it there. All right, so I'm gonna get my drill. Apologies if it's a little bit loud, but this goes faster. All right, so I'm gonna drill the yoke back down. Okay, so I always drill these silver parts first. And then from there, we're going to flip it back forward. And then I'm going to install the four black bolts back in. Yeah. Hey, James. Hey, JQ. <clears throat> Bobby Broadway is here. Thank you guys for joining. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to hold this down. Installing the yoke back, you just need to kind of pull it to the side, press these in. And uh, I'm doing this live because it, it's saving me time to for doing and editing a full tutorial. Um, but I do plan on releasing an updated version of my tutorial where I will talk and do, I guess, a TLDR version of this exact mod using the GeekPie. Because I've been mentioning that people have asked, can I use the GeekPie to mod Star Wars? Because I showed how you can use the GeekPie to mod Outrun. And absolutely, same principle. Like Once I figured out you could do it, I was like, yes. I'm, I'm you know, the, like, the APAC is great. Um, but the APAC is also 40 bucks, and sometimes it, it was hard to find. It got out of stock for a little while, but um, so it's like 40, 45 bucks. The APAC, when I got it before, before I started announcing the APAC, you know, I want to say that I was slightly responsible for the price increase on the Geek Pies. I mean, um, the Geek Pie controllers, when I first got them, they were only like 14, 15 bucks on eBay. <laughs> And um, I ordered a ton of them so I can do mods and things. And then as soon as I posted my Outrun mod and, you know, started linking people to get them, it's kind of like the thing, like when you see the, like, share it out, the price increased. And so now they're $20 each, which it's still half the price of the APAC, but it's still an awesome encoder. I use it for everything, guys. I mean, I, I'm using it in my Star Wars pinball mod, like that Geek Pie encoder is amazing. It's better than your standard typical zero delay encoder because it has the analog settings. And that's the that's the key thing for anything that has an analog signal um, and you want to combine that, like the plunger on your Star Wars pinball, you can use that encoder. So that's why it's so genius. OK, cool. So that's um, the yoke is installed back in there. We're going to install the power back in here. So let's install the power switch and the volume switch back in here as well. So this is, uh, again, I remove all the parts when I do my drilling because I want to make sure that I drill the panel correctly the first time. Because if you mess up your plexi, you get one shot at plexi and it's over. I can't tell you how many how many plexis I've cracked. I even cracked like, uh, you know, some of the, some of my clients might be watching, but I was like, I've cracked plexiglass on a client's yoke before too, like just being careless. And I've, I don't know how many panels I've modded to point, but it's like heartbreaking. If anybody's ever modded and then you've kind of like broken your plexiglass or something else like in the middle of it, you just, your heart sinks. And I'm just like, what am I gonna do? And fortunately, I'm super lucky because I have in my backyard a guy named Bobby Vu to die for. 
and he can cut plexi and he, he made me a custom plexi that fixed everything and so um he saved my butt at least multiple times with with you know cracking plexiglass so he's the plexi king uh he even has a tutorial on how to cut plexi too so um definitely check out bobby's channel for um all those resources on getting plexiglass updated okay all right, so when I do this, I definitely want to check the volume switch to make sure I can still turn it up and down. It's a little bit tight, which means I over-tightened it. I'm just going to loosen these screws slightly, just a little bit. Okay, and now my volume switch to move up and down slowly. My daughter has got one of those printers yesterday for her birthday, and I will have her make it. Oh, she got like a cry cut or something? Is that what she got? Yeah, man, those are awesome. If you can, if you can make use of them, definitely do. All right, I always also have a trash can handy because I have a lot of trash <clears throat> during my modding sessions. Admiral Akbar, school is in session. <laughs> only follow along if you want to. This video is for educational purposes only, guys. All right, cool. So now we have our Star Wars yoke here um, with the, uh, the buttons. And now <clears throat> I'm going to open up my mod kit and uh, start putting stuff in. Okay, so let's start with the, um, the analog controller here. So the analog... Is I call it's it's called a four axis basic joystick. I found this on eBay almost a year ago because I was looking for a throttle that I can install into my control panel, and it's become my favorite little joystick to add into the panel because of a couple of reasons. It's it's small in terms of form factor. It doesn't take up a lot of space on your control panel. It's not like a huge throttle that you need, and then also it it has a you know full analog axis. It has a rotation axis, and it has a button on the top too. Um, so it does a lot and it's super cheap. It's only, I think like 15 bucks or so. And so that's, that's my main reason for really liking it. Um, hold on, I'm going to try to adjust my camera so that I can show more of the top part. Okay. There. Okay. So, um, and, and if you make the hole the right size, what I used to do is for, for these size standard 29 millimeter holes, I used to take this whole thing apart and then I used to you know put the control panel on the top and then, um, or the, the this part through the top and then the tart in the bottom and then reassemble it. But I was like, oh, that used to take a lot of time. And then I discovered that if you drill the right size hole, you can just stick the whole thing through it and it's awesome. So, um, and I did, I did some custom work to the buttons though. So it doesn't come with any like wiring instructions though. Um, so I will, I will give during this live tutorial kind of guidelines on how to wire it up and plug it into the, um, the geek pie. And there, there is some work you do need to do to the geek pie itself to get it ready and prepped to be able to accept all the different inputs and buttons too. So I'll go over a little bit about what I did. This is why having a mod kit is a little bit easier, but I mean, you can absolutely do this yourself too. I just... I've, I've spent so much time trying to optimize this and get it easily working um, that this kind of takes the, the headache out of it. So again, this will just fit directly through um, on the bottom. I'm actually going to uh, put some double-sided tape on this bottom part right here, and that's just going to let me mount it through that hole. So let's actually do I have it here. Okay, I'll do that here. So extra supplies that I highly recommend, double-sided tape, zip ties, zip ties, and zip ties are what you need to. So I don't include that in my kit. Um, but let's cut this up and then this is how I mount the joystick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, about, about an inch and a half of a double-sided tape and then I'm going to cut it in half like this, okay? And then I'm going to put the double-sided tape on one edge here and then on the other side here. And then from here, there's, um, you know, to get the other side this side here, you just have to cut it a little bit shorter, about an inch, so that way you can fit and get all four sides securely on there. So this is about, maybe maybe about an inch. Morning AZ, Earth Monster. Okay, so this is just the, um, the other sides that we're putting the double-sided tape onto. Uh, and the control panel is, is too thick because it does come with screws for you to kind of secure it and mount it down. The problem is that it, yeah, the control panel is too thick for the screws to, to reach into the holes that you would normally secure this into. Um, so that's why you need double-sided tape on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to mount this through. Um, so for those that have a premium kit or decide to get this actual same um, 
um, controller, there, there is a way that I recommend mounting it through the hole here. So as it's going to go through this hole here, what I want is I want the uh, potentiometers. These are called pots, potentiometers. I want one of them facing up on this top part and then this one facing towards the inside here. So it's going to go in this way. So this is how you need to mount it um, for this, like if you want to follow this tutorial. Um, OK, so you just kind of pushed it through. I pushed the 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 um, the rubber cap part through so that the um, the bottom part is there. So once you have it kind of situated, you have to play with it a little bit and make sure that this is, is centered. And then we're going to slowly pull off the double sided tape and then make sure that it's centered before we kind of place it. Into so let me see if I can do that while on camera. Now the pressure is on. So I need to be able to use my little fingers, remove the double sided tape from the tape that I just had. And I'm sure there's probably other better methods to do this, but this is what I do for what you guys are seeing behind the scenes. Well, not only what I what I do, this is actually um, I'm installing this for a client. This is a client that I'm doing a full service commission for. So um, for folks that don't want to do this at all and want to uh, commission me to mod your yoke for them, I do have limited, very limited full service commissions available. And so I do do these occasionally, but it, they just take so much time that I've been trying to uh, limit myself on how many I do. But again, more information, if you're interested, is in my uh, Facebook group um, that you can find out. So I call it my Starcade group. All right, so that looks slightly off. I'm going to raise it just a little bit. So you really have to be careful with the placement on this because on this, this top part here, we're going to be mounting this plate. And you want to make sure this plate is, is actually touching the plexiglass there. So it's going to look nice and clean. Um, so now I have it mounted in the perfect space. I'm going to leave that there. Perfect. OK, so I'm going to leave this off for now. Later, usually at the very end is when I mount this down. But the next step is actually putting this cover on, drilling some small, like drill, drilling through the plexi again very carefully using a small drill bit. And then these are uh, screws that actually will screw down into this. So um, I will. I don't have the drill bit. Oh, actually, I do have the drill bit. Maybe I'll do it right now just to just just to finish installing it. Okay. I'll show you what I use. I use this tiny little drill bit guy here and I have my drill. So I'm going to do this now just to finish the installation portion of this joystick and then we'll get into the actual buttons itself. So all right, so just to show you guys I'm going to install Okay. All right, so I have my drill here. I'm going to see if I can do this without getting crazy. OK, so now that everything's mounted down, uh, I'm going to line up my holes. And so what I like to do is I like to um, kind of like have them in a square. So there's four holes on this just joystick here. So I like having it in this square. I mean, you, you can orient it technically anyway, because it's not going to be going into that bottom base part. But hold it down, and then I make starter holes. So I'm just kind of like marking where I'm drilling because I want to be able to see it more clearly. OK, so I've marked my holes of where I'm drilling and it, it made hole, like a little mark on the plexi that you can see. And if you're once you're drilling into the plexi before you start putting on your buttons and everything, like I highly recommend doing a clean down of like, you know, wipe of your plexiglass. Make sure there's no dirt, dirt or dust underneath. You can take a little dust, um, you know, a dust can and, and spray it. And when you're, you're drilling this, hold down the plexi so you don't get extra dust underneath your plexi. So I'm going to hopefully do this and not crack anything. So here we go. All right, that's one. <clears throat> nice clean hole right there. All right, we're going to do it again. The magic blow. Get the dust out. All right, this one's really close to the edge, so we got to be careful. I have cracked like, Plexi doing this portion too, so this part always scares me. Anytime I drill through Plexi, like I get nervous. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys are watching and like nervous for me, but yeah, I get nervous doing this. And actually, I don't know anybody else, any other content creators that that does live modding. Like, like I do, because I make tons of mistakes while I mod. So <laughs> I really don't know why I do this live, but I should be recording this and editing it. But it takes it takes so much time to edit, guys. So like, you know, producing content isn't 
isn't always easy. So, you know, Brad, shout out to anybody that that tries to produce content for folks to watch. It takes a lot of time. So I always have respect for content creators. And I hope you guys appreciate that um, are graceful with me making mistakes along the way. Uh, foam tape rules the whirlwind modding. I agree, George. Welcome to the channel, George. Love you. Uh, what size is the small drill bit? Uh, I don't know when you get this this is the um i'll show you here like this is the size of the screw um so i don't i don't know the exact measurement of that little drill bit so you just kind of have to you know if you have like a multi drill bit set just find which one kind of fits the size of the little screw and then go from there so i would highly recommend that okay here's my screwdriver okay and then I, I I wouldn't use a drill bit to drill down these screws here. I would use like a screwdriver and then make sure you drill this part down. So this is how you install this joystick into your control panel. All right. Let's see. Oh yeah. Okay. Um do this side. And then after this, we're gonna install the buttons. And then I'm going to show you how to wire everything into the Geek Pie itself. So hopefully I can get this done in the next 30 minutes or so. I don't want this stream to go super long, but at least you guys are following along live and you can see how long it might take you to do this if you're trying to install this yourself. And again, I, I will do a shortened version of this for a full tutorial, but there's nothing like watching live modding and seeing how long it really takes, right? You really can't rush your modding, but I'm glad that you guys are joining and watching. Can't always watch live, but I'm glad I am today. Really like the live content. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Deputy. Appreciate you joining in. Yeah. All right. So we have a fully functional, well, installed joystick, but now we're going to get our buttons in, in here and placed. So doing one last check, make sure there's no dust under here. Because once you start installing buttons, it's hard to lift the plexi now and get out of the dust under. So actually, let me let me go get my dust can. I'm going to go get my dust can so I can do one spray. Make sure there's no dust under there. All right. I got it. Dust cans, you remember this? <laughs> Anybody ever do this where you turn your dust can upside down and then you spray it and then you know it starts to get all let's let's do it for the sake of science. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Uh freezing my hand on live live YouTube because I like I like shocking myself. I like freezing my hand. Compressed air. You all have I'm I'm sure all of you guys have, have played with frozen compressed air before, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, just doing another kind of breeze to make sure all my dust is out at the plexi. Because once we install buttons, there's no going back. To one final dust. Dust, dust, dust. Dust, dust, dust. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. I think that's good. I don't think it will freeze anything anymore. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's start adding in our buttons. So I have, again, lots of buttons here. This is the Geek Pie. We're going to put that in a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> but let's start with the big reds. So I'm just going to dump everything out. Let's dump it all out. So this is everything that comes in the bag. So I, I give you these two, uh, you know, these are two 60 millimeter red buttons that uh, you can get these in packs of like, I think five from Amazon for like 15 bucks. Um, or like you can order them individually. <clears throat> They're a little bit more expensive, like five bucks each. Um, but they come uh, disassembled and you know, these are the parts that you would need to put together. So you have your LED, which goes into the bulb holder here. And then you have the micro switch, <clears throat> which you just need to line up with the grooves here, stick it in and snap it into place. Make sure that this clicky part is facing up here. And then the buttons I've already snapped off and snap. Um, there's like two little nubs here that are normally there. So I, I usually already undo those. And then these are just going to go straight into here and screw in. <clears throat> so the orientation of the buttons, though, too. So see how I have this to the side? I actually have it where the micro switch, when you mount it in, is facing 
inwards towards the middle of the yoke. So that's how I have my mounting placement. So you'll see, I'll turn it over once I'm done mounting so you can see the placements of which way. And that actually is important because once you get the micro switch wires in, um, your, your micro switch wires are only a certain length. So having them pointed the right way is uh, really helpful. Okay, so we're going to do our second one here. Same thing, LED bulb goes into the bulb holder. Micro switch goes into this portion here, snap it into place. And then we're gonna put in our big red button. Big reds, <clears throat> these are always cool. I really like the way they look of these big red buttons for certain things. And they absolutely match the design and decor of the Star Wars cap. You know, those uh, big event buttons you used to play during Star Wars trilogy. That was the goal. That was the <clears throat> original goal was to play Star Wars trilogy with the yoke. All right, so those are in. All right, next up are um, these individual square buttons. These are square LEDs that, um, that I got from AliExpress. Um, you can also buy sets of these too from Amazon in different colors. So I use red, white, and um, yellow. I believe they are, I don't even know if it says the length on here, 32, it says 32 millimeter red or, or square LEDs. And so it has like this little mount here to add some extra spacing. It comes with the same bulb and micro switch and then the, the screw. Um, so here's the placement of what I do. And you know, this is completely up to you if you, if you wanna do it a different way. I put my white, my two white squares in this middle section here. So I'm gonna start there with the, with the whites. Okay. All right, so we got the white bulb going in here. Let's see, where's the other lights? Let's do, undo all of these. Uh, that's the yellow, here's the other whites. Okay, so let's start with the whites. So I have eight buttons here that kind of go along the side, including the radar button. Um, it was kind of cool. I am. I remember the first time I was like, I'm gonna light up these buttons. Like I had, I had zero idea if it was gonna work, if it was gonna fit. And so, you know, that's that's part of the fun of modding is just trying to discover what you can do and seeing if it works or not. And this ended up working and looking better than than I imagined when I first got it. And then once I added the button graphics, that was really game changer. So at least for me, keeping it simple. Um, I know George is watching. George can do so many different things with his 3D printer, so he can um, he can think it and can make it out of thin air. Um, but yeah, this this is exciting. Those nubs are must to snap off. Very annoying. Yeah. What's up, Ricky? Ricky's here. Shane's here too. What's going on, guys? Thanks for joining. All right. So the uh, the two whites are gonna go here on the sides. <clears throat> All right. I, again, I have the um, the nubs facing kind of horizontal, facing inwards because the micro switches are going to be facing in towards the center because the micro the, the encoder is going to be here. So you want all your micro switches facing towards the center of the um, of your control panel. All right. So that's the whites. Uh, let's do the yellows next. So the yellows I install on this top left here, and then on this uh, left one over here. So I go left here or yellow here, yellow here. Um, and uh, again, this is just my preference of how I do it. Uh, again, you can you can do whatever colors you want if you get a set of colors. Um, but this is what comes in my mod kit. You get two white buttons, two yellow buttons, and two red square buttons. And this is where I do my placement. So, um, and so for for these ones on the bottom, these these ones that are like on the bottom of the yoke, I do have the um, the placement of the micro switches facing up so that it could reach the top of the geek pie, which we're gonna mount behind the control setter. So let's get it. this one to the side. Okay. All right, so this is gonna plug in here again. So this micro switch is facing kind of towards the, again, towards the, um, the encoder. And then this one's to the inside. All right. And then lastly are the red squares. So let's grab the red square ones. Always handy to have a trash can next to you so you can throw away your trash as you go. It gets very messy when you're modding. Okay, so these come in these packages here. Red squares. All right. 
and then the other red square button too. Okay, all right, so this is the last one. And so the red ones, I do red here on this one next to this yellow to kind of add some nice color contrast. It should fit perfectly if you are using Greg's panel or my panel. Um, so yeah, definitely test that out. Okay, cool. All right, that's there. And then the um, the top right corner here is where I put my other red button. And this becomes on the premium panels. Um, there's certain ways to exit games where you use an escape button. I mapped this button to be an escape command. So that's my default exit button. For the basic mods that I have um, just a, a smaller number of buttons, I actually map the uh, this giant um, radar button as the exit button too. So there's options. You can you could always remap things as you need to, but there's a certain button on the encoder, um, button number 16, that's defaulted to um, exit if you're going to use my playlist. But again, you can do, do it however you like. All right, so we're going to snap this micro switch into place. This feels a little bit hard to snap. So let's try this one. Sometimes these are... The micro switches don't always fit great. And so just be careful when you snap them into place. You don't want to try to break any of the nubs. Uh, they'll still work, but you know it might be harder to get placed later on. OK, so those are all of our square LED buttons. And then we have these bottom two here, which aren't squares. Um, you have a rectangle. So this is a 30, I think it's a 34 millimeter. I think that's what it says. Maybe 44 if you, if you count the vertical height of it. So again, these also had nubs on it that I that I cut off. And so um, these are going to go through here. So I do this as a rectangle there. And then the last big button is the big green button. So we have this big green button here, which comes in this extra bag. So. I believe the green button is a 44 millimeter button. And again, since, I mean, these are really nice graphics, but I include a radar graphic too that covers it. So you got your green button there. Let's make sure this is oriented the right way. Put down here. All right, so that's the green button. Got your green micro switch. Everything is wired up and in. Uh, and then the last buttons on the top here are your start and coin, which are these uh, Chrome buttons, which I get from. I really like the look of the Chrome buttons. You really could use any buttons that you want to, but these are from DIY Retro. And I started using them. They're like white Chrome buttons. They look, they just kind of finish the look of it. I really like it. I'm a flashy guy, kind of like not flashy guy, but I, I like I like premium looking things. And Chrome is always one of those things that are like, oh, that looks cool. Just kind of like the Star Wars Arcade One Up pinball, like the chrome trim on it just makes it look so cool. And um, I think, even though I know I'm going to be getting an I'm going to be getting an at games pinball later on, um, I saw one at Bobby Vu's house the other day, and I saw it, and immediately the first thing I thought was like, this does not look premium like the Arcade One Up one. Even though it can do more stuff, I'm just shallow like that, and I like the look of the Arcade One Ups more than I do the at game stuff. But that's for most things. I think the cabs for Arcade One Up versus at games. That's that's the main argument there. All right, so the buttons are installed, and then the white micro switches. And so um, sometimes you can mix and match the micro switches, but you also have to be careful. Like the ones that come with the DIY retro ones, they use a slightly different holder, which which is bigger in gap to fit the the holes here. So try not to mix and match the um, the micro switches that you get because sometimes they fit specifically for the buttons that they came with. Um, you can try to mix and match, but if you see something not fitting. Um, that might be the reason why, where you are trying to just use a micro switch for something that isn't designed to fit it. Okay, I'm trying to get this last micro switch down, and then it keeps twisting and turning. So let me tighten this. And then there. Nope. Okay. And then I'm gonna have trouble with this like last micro switch. Like all of them went in perfectly, except for this final one. And I'm like, as I'm saying that, come on, micro switch, you can do it. Get in here. Get in there. There it is. All right, you want it to click into place so that when you press it, you can hear that sweet clicking sound. All right, all our buttons are in. Look at this, guys. Looking good and clean. This is a 
again, what I call a premium mod kit. This is my standard look and feel for all the buttons. And I'll, I'll demo how to add in the graphics later, but I install the buttons first and then I add in the graphics afterwards because I want to make sure everything's wired and working and then the button graphics are absolutely last. All right, let's get into the backside and get to wiring. Holy crap, we've already been going for 45 minutes and I haven't done any of the wiring yet. Ah. It's the problem with live modding if everything takes too long. All right, so um, let's get to the GeekPie installation for right now. That's the next thing that you want to do. So once you have your buttons installed, you got this kind of set up, the next thing you want to do is, is start working with your GeekPie. So this encoder brain is the main thing that we'll be using to plug all the different buttons in. And it's way easier than the APAC because you don't have to change any of the ground wires or anything. You can just plug stuff directly into here from basic encoders. So if you didn't get my mod kit and you are buying this GeekPie, the one thing you have to do, um, thanks George, uh, the one thing you have to do before you install this is, um, I'll, I'll show you guys, I'll, I'll throw a picture of it because it's kind of hard to see. So this is the GeekPie encoder. So you see here all on the bottom row, the JC connections, like the little hole opening is, is towards the left. Um, and by default, they're all facing the right. So I actually pulled each one of those ones in the bottom out of the, of the, the two pin sockets and reversed them so that they're all facing to the left. And so if you, if you got a, your own brand new GeekPie encoder, you need to do this if you're going to be using it with the yoke. If you don't do this, what happens is if you press one of the buttons on the yoke, it actually presses all the buttons on the yoke for some reason. So like the, the way the grounds and the, and the buttons are set up with the way the yoke works, it, it's the same um, inside of the yoke. There's like a single controller board. So if you press one of them, all the buttons get pressed. So if you want them to be individually pressed, you have to switch that bottom row on the geek pie. So um, for folks that have um, my mod kit that I, I've already gone ahead and did that. So again, uh, if you're doing it, you just need to pull that off, flip it. So that's the one thing you have to do to prep the the geek pie. I was freaking out when I when I when I did that. And I spent like two days like really being nervous that like, no, I, I, I got this geek pie and I told everybody it was the best thing in, since sliced bread and then it doesn't work. And then <laughs> I finally figured it out. Okay. So I'm going to take one of the extra screws that are left over from like when you drill out the control panel cover that's here, you'll have a bunch of these like little extra screws. So I'm just taking an extra screw and then I'm going to mount the geek pie on top of this control like behind the power and volume switch onto this section here on this top left area i want the usb facing to the left and so i'm going to take this um this uh the screw and mount it directly onto the one that's on the top left there and again i, I recommend having a small screwdriver handy so that you can do um, the small work i wouldn't use a drill um, on this one as well so hopefully i can drill that down Okay, maybe I need to use a bigger screwdriver. Like it's feel like feels like I'm not turning it as much as I need to. Turn, 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 turn. Okay, until that feels nice and secure. So yeah, get that nice and tight. Uh, the good thing about these encoders is that they're, they're super light, and so it's actually really easy to to just mount it using one screw. Like you could you could mount it several different ways. You could even try mounting it using, oh, here's a better one. Okay, here's a big one. That's, this is why. Ah, better. Better. I was looking for a bigger screwdriver. It always helps when you have the right tools. Okay, so that's nice and tight on there. Uh, see, it moves a little bit, but it's not going to move once you have everything wired on there. So that's perfect enough to be secure. You could also mount it here if you wanted to use PCB feed or adhesive or things. Um, but that, that works for me. So that's what I recommend. So now that that's mounted, okay. Um, the other thing you need to do, and um, I'll start talking about it now because you know, like, before I start wiring stuff in, um, everything else is going to be using the stock, uh, these wire connectors, these JST connections that I'm going to show you guys how to do. But in terms of other things you need to mod on your board, if you want the volume switch to work, this volume switch already comes with this three pin JST XH connection. Okay. And like, look, there's already connections for you to plug it in. And originally when I plugged it in and I did this with my outrun mod too, like I was kind of stupid and I was like, Oh, like if you plug it in, the, the ground wires are switch switch. So it doesn't work when you plug it in. But I found if you just take 
like a small flathead screwdriver and you you switch the brown and the red wires i've already done this guys so like this is really hard to tell on here um but this one right now it's it's if you if you're looking at it from left to right it's it's black brown and then red but if it's stock on yours it'll be black red and then brown and so if you swap the the red and the brown uh, wires by just pressing in one of the little um you know pins here you could pull out the wire and i'll, I'll try to do this without cutting myself because i'm using a, a razor knife uh, here an exacto knife but you should be able to pull out one of the wires and then swap it um let's see if this is me doing it live so you have to press it in press press in or you can use a small flathead too. You don't you have to use an exact. I shouldn't be using it. Okay, so yeah, see, I pulled it out. I pulled out the pin, right? And then from there, just like you can you can pull out the red and the brown wires. So whatever whatever your setup is, swap those two so that the brown is in the middle and the red is on the white. So uh, the reason for this is that is when you plug it into this section here, I'm gonna plug in the volume switch into um, A Z, which is this this top right one that you see here um i want this to go in here this way and now both of the volume switch up and down are going to work properly and the way i have it mapped in my playlist it's going to um, work and run the volume on your pc too so you have to swap again the red and the brown cable on your volume switch for it to work properly okay now let's get to um everything else let's start with the actual stock wires that go into um you know that are coming from your yoke so um this is this is all stock wiring from your yoke um these are the two wires here are for the potentiometers the x-axis and y-axis and then you have your four buttons on the yoke that are here so by default these um connections for the potentiometers are using what's called a JST pH connection and they're they're tiny so these this wouldn't fit directly into your geek pie without modification so in my kit and then again I'll, I don't have a tutorial for this but I actually give you guys this which is a connection to a female JST pH here and then it's going to output to a male JST XH so essentially we're changing this small connection into a bigger connection that we can plug into the yoke, I mean, into the encoder. So for the X axis, these three axes here, this first one is AXY. So this is, I mean, AX, that's the uh, X axis. And then that's for the brown, red, and black wires. And then this is your Y axis potentiometer. So again, these are just extension cables that it's gonna extend there. And then this is gonna plug into the AY. So that's your yoke that's powered up. So that's your X axis, that's your Y axis. All right, so the buttons, the buttons are here uh, and we're gonna plug these in accordingly into the slots. So starting up here, this is where your uh, K1, 2, 3, 4 are listed here. And I, I have this, um, I'll show you guys on screen. I have in part of my installation guide, uh, a kind of map, a roadmap of where things should be plugged into. <laughs> And so if you ever get a mod kit from me, I kind of have, have this written in here, but this is what matches where things should go um, on the actual um, Geek Pie itself. Um, but in terms of color coding, each of these wires has a different color. It's red, blue, green, and brown. And so the, the way just color coding works, and you can remember this, um, and I have to double check because I think it goes uh, blue, red, brown, green. But let me double check because I, I might... I might be incorrect. All right, it goes blue, blue, red, green, brown. Okay, sorry. Blue, red, green, brown. Blue, red, green, brown. Blue, and let's do red. That's into K2. Green, and then brown. Okay. So you have to do that order because that's the order that I have working on my playlist. And, and again, I mean, this is if you happen to be using my playlist, but that this, if you need to follow along if you're using my playlist. All right, so that's that's the buttons and the yokes that are that are set up. That's there. Um, oh, the other thing that I didn't do yet that I normally like to start to do, and I'll start talking about it now because we haven't started wiring up the buttons yet, the actual buttons. Um, I like to have clean wiring. And in order to do that, you need lots of zip ties. I mentioned this earlier, lots of zip ties, don't be afraid. 
and then I use um, what's like these things, which are our like, zip tie holders. These are like little square adhesive backings that hold the zip ties down. So I use a ton of these in my mods. So um, let's let's go through and do the placement of where I put my zip ties. So this is not included in my mod kit. This is just something that you don't have to do this. You could just wire everything into here and just have it be all, all over the place. Um, but I like to do this and I like to like wire stuff down while I'm modding because it's easier than doing it all the way at the end. So I'm gonna show you my placement for stuff of where I put these here. Um, so these, uh, I'm gonna start by putting four on the sides of um, the yoke panel here. That's kind of like my base to make sure that all the wires kind of wire through here and that I can get everything in a nice clean looking order. Um, since we have the big red buttons on the side and the start coin buttons, I usually add um, some there. So I think I use like 13 of these per panel, if not more, but they're also useful for when you are uh, you know, wiring up and cleaning the backside of your cab too. So I, I, as any modder, I'd recommend it as part of your modding arsenal to have zip ties and these guys, they help make things look a lot cleaner when you're done. And um, I'll leave some product links too, in case you guys are interested, but you can just look up Amazon zip tie adhesive holders and you guys could find these easily too. So um, I'm putting more here and then I'm gonna put one it's almost like um, a, a giant rectangle. I put the four here, and then I put four on the outside. So they kind of look like a square here. So one, two, three, four. And then I can do another one here. One, two, three, four. And then I do one last one right here in the middle so that I, can, I, I have some wires that go across. And I'm going to map that there. OK, so those are my, my holders for now. And I have some zip ties handy and ready. <clears throat> and so since the start, since these are all kind of like already all over the place, um, I want to get these out of the way so I can actually get a clean look. So I'm going to zip tie all of these to this holder here just to get it out of the way. And I'll do some additional zip tying a bit later to um, to fold it over. But I want, I want to make sure that these are out of the way for right now. OK, so boom, that's how we do that. Also have some handy dandy clippers to clip your zip tie holders. Get that out of the way. You want you want a nice, clean working surface if you can. All right, uh, this thing is gonna look awesome. Already looks like Kit's dash from Knight Rider. Thanks, Deputy. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely really beautiful when it's all lit up. I can tell you, like, it definitely looks better in person than it does, um, you know, when you see it here. Okay, so let's get to the wiring. So um, these are the uh, encoder wires that are. Uh, a little bit, these these are the bigger ones. So when I say bigger, they, they have the HAP style connections at the end um, so that fit these big buttons here. I also provide some of these other encoder connections too. This is for the, um, the joystick that we're gonna plug into these pots a little bit later on, but we're gonna do the buttons first. Um, and then for the premium mod, um, since there's different button placements all over the place, um, actually provide two different length um, wires. So this is, um, you know, there's a couple of small wires for the ones that are really close to the encoder. And then there's these gold ones are the long ones for the buttons that they're most further away from the encoder. So, I mean, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, I think there's 12 buttons total. So it's, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six as the close ones. And then these bottom ones are all going to be the, um, the ones that are super far. Okay. So let's start here. And um, it I, it technically doesn't matter which ones you wire for the black, the brown, or sorry, the blue and the white ones is the buttons. But these top buttons on the micro switches, these top terminals are all the ground. And I like to make the whites all of my grounds just to keep it consistent. So this is just personal preference. I think it should work if you do it the other way. It shouldn't matter for these types of encoders. Um, but this is just how I do it. So just to have more consistency. I know some people use, I used to use, I think the blues is all my grounds, but for some reason I, I switched my my setup and I started using whites as the ground and this is kind of what works. But do what works for you guys if, if you want to follow along. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to add in these whites here. Sometimes it helps to have like these little encoder connection ends can get sharp. <laughs> and so I kind of feel it when I'm, I'm pulling and stuff and I'm like, I feel like my hands are dry and like, I'm going to cut my hands soon. I'm going to like start bleeding all over. This is a uh, Joe, Joe Zenner. 
Joe Zenner's panel that I'm working on right now. Since I had to work on his panel anyways, I was like, let's just let's just do this so that we can show folks how long it takes to actually wire up one of these panels. <clears throat> okay, that's that. Okay, and then I believe this one is going to be a short one as well. Okay, so my short ones, I have the two start coins. I have these two for sure that are short. I have this one that's a short. And I, I think, I think, I think this one here is going to be my last short because this one I think needs to go all the way to this top portion of the encoder. And this one only needs to go here. Um, but let, so this goes um, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so this one goes 11, 12. So yeah, so this one is going to be your short. So if you guys are following along, you have six shorts and six longs. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six are going to be your short encoder wires, OK? So this this is important because like um, I guess technically you could wire the, these buttons however you want to into the encoder, but you know this is just how I've I've set it up so that it's really easy to to navigate when you're doing controller mapping. Tony was asking how you get the Starcade mod. Uh, if you check the link in the description, I have a link to my Facebook group, which I have all the information about getting a mod kit. So definitely check that out, and then you can check the announcement section. I have everything posted there. So yeah, definitely. Thanks for asking. OK, so now we're going to do the long ones. So obviously, the big red buttons are the long ones. Uh, same thing. They're, they're the exact same blue and white wires. Uh, they're just a little bit longer. So we're going to plug the black wires, or brown. Sorry, black. I keep saying black and white, but it's blue and white. And this is, I can't tell you how much of like a, a difference it makes using the Geek Pi versus the APAC. When I use the APAC, I used to have to cut these encoder wires, then I would cut off the ends, then I would put on a ferro crimping tube, and then I would, um, um, what you call it? I would put on a ferro crimping tube, and, and then I would have to like screw it into the APAC, and it would just take so much time to do all that work. And then afterwards, the grounds, you have to daisy chain all your grounds to go into a single input on the APAC. And like this controller and like encoder, all you're doing is just plugging it in. As soon as you do this, it's like, it's, it's mad genius. It's awesome. OK. Oh, I don't see one, two, three. Oh, maybe I would have. Maybe there's an extra one on this kit. All right, hold on one second. Let me double check something. All right, so uh, if you get a mod kit from me, um, the, the one that's the trickiest to, to put a encoder on, if you see this one right here, see how this is actually butting up against this one? If you try to put a standard encoder here, it, you, it would actually be hitting this one here. So in order to get this one um, uh, kind of wired up correctly, uh, I provide, I, I think I, did, I pr should have did it. So if you guys all have kits, please let me know if you don't have this. But I made a special wire. One of the encoders actually is already pre-bent. And let's see, it's, it's pre-bent. And it has a little kind of heat shrink tube on it for extra support like this. So if you see this in your control panel like kit, it's for this button right here that's going to be butt up here because you need to be able to bend this down and, and put it here. If you don't use the heat shrink tube when you bend it down, the, the metal part is a little bit brittle. So in order to get this mounted, I'm going to un I'm going to unscrew this in and then put the blue wire on this long one here. And then this is my ground on the top, just like that. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to screw it back in or click it back into place. So this one, again, if you see it, you need to use that bendy one with the heat shrink tube on this one alone because it's going to hit up against everything. All right, so now all the wires are here. Uh, let's, uh, let's get everything wired up. Tony says, thanks. Darth Blacken says, would you ever mod upgrade an old classic arcade? Are you a purist? I am absolutely not a purist. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm getting more respect 
for classic arcades to to you know um for keeping them and preserving them as much as you can like but if you if you can't if you can't save it right and you don't have the know-how then you know upgrading it or modding it might be your only choice like i actually have been thinking about this i have a full-size virtual on cab that i i need i was thinking about gutting one side of it because it doesn't work anymore and putting in a pc so i can play dual stick games but part of me really wants to try to restore it so um i don't know but i'm not a purist definitely um but i i don't know if i would if i would go that far Okay, so let's go to the the next buttons that you need to wire up. So next, I'm gonna go in order so that you can know what to do. Again, so if uh, I I provide some guidelines in terms of what buttons go where, this is button number five and six are the big red buttons. Seven and eight are the coin buttons, and then starting with the top left, it goes nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we're adding sixteen buttons into this little APAC or this uh, Geek Pie encoder. So we did buttons one, two, three, four. We're gonna do buttons five and six, which are the big red buttons. So this one, this button here is five, this button here is six. Uh, when you reverse it, it's on your left and right. So this needs to go all the way over to button number five, which is the next one over here, okay? This long one over here, I'm gonna try to like wire it down so it follows along this path because eventually I will be, you know, zip tying it down with the other wired buttons too. So this is going to be number six. Okay. Your start button is going to be number seven. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not labeled. It doesn't say button seven. Like five and six were L2 and R2. And then uh, button seven and eight, which are starting coin, are listed as L1, R1. So don't use the start select that's on here. Follow this guide. So start, which is this, this one that's closer in, is button number seven, and this one is button number eight. Okay. So again, so start, which is this button is seven, this button is eight, and it just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these last two over here are nine and 10. So buttons nine and 10 are gonna start going here. So the way, if I flip this over so you guys can get a, a better look at it. So right now, the buttons go, the bottom right trigger is one, bottom left is two, top right is three, Top left is four. So one, two, three, four. This is gonna go five, six, then seven, eight, okay? And then these buttons go nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's like a big U so that you can know what button goes where, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then 11 or nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so flipping it back over, so 9, 10 are these two buttons here. So this 9, 10, this one's going to go into this 9 right here, which is on the board. It says SE, and then this is 10. Okay, let me pull this right so that's not good. All. This is where it gets all messy if you, if you don't tie stuff down now. And again, you don't have to tie stuff down. You could just have it all loose like this when you're done and it's fine. So that's nine, 10. And then, uh, so on the board, these bottom two right here are now say K11, K12. So this is 11 and 12, these two right here. And so I'll kind of show you on the geek pie again. It's these two, the top two where it says K11 and K12, that's the uh, 11 and 12 on the geek pie. All right, so we're gonna take the one that was, um, our special one that was bent is gonna be number 11. And then this last one here is going to be number 12. Oh, I mixed it. So this one should be 12. And then this one should be 11. All right, we're almost done guys. And then I hopefully I might be able to test some gameplay with you guys if you guys wanna stick around. All right, so that's all the wires on this side. It's a mess guys. Ugh, like. I, I have to zip tie it. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I, I can't stand it when all my wires all over the place. This is just me being a little, is it OCD if I, if I can't stand messy wires? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But okay, so I have all my wires coming this way. I'm just pretty much going to zip tie all of them together in a bunch. And I'll just, maybe I'll just do this one side so you can see it. And then Again, you don't have to do this step, but you know, I, I really like to have my wires clean. And then I have all my blue wires here. And then since they all kind of go into different places, I'm just going to tie them together with this cross section here. So at least it looks somewhat clean. And then later on, you can like pull back and, uh, and make them a lot tighter too. Okay, here we go there. All right, so at least I cleaned up my wires a little bit. See, even just those three zip ties 
boom, look how clean this is. And now these are like a little bit loose, but you could always pull these back and tie it down a little bit further. You can tie this whole thing together afterwards. Everything's plugged in already, but at least this helps you keep your, your board looking clean and so that you don't have to get wires all over the place. So let's make sure we clip this, this, and this. I can't believe this stream is already going for an hour. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting to the other side now. Okay, um, these are our start coin buttons. So I, let me zip tie this one down too really fast. So this is my start coin. Modding and talking always takes so much time. I, I usually go faster when I'm not talking, but you know, gotta gotta create some some early morning content for you guys. Hopefully this is helpful for folks that are tuning in and don't even have a mod kit. Okay, all right, so then it was, uh, okay, so this is where it gets really confusing. I'm sorry. So the last four buttons that we need to plug in are here. This is 13, 13 14, 15, 16. 13, 14, 15, 16. But look at the board, guys. The last four that we need to plug in here on the left, it says down, up, right, left. So like in terms of what registers as 13, 14, 15, 16, it goes up, down, left, right. So up is 13, down is 14, left is 15, right is 16. So if you, if you say like up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, like that's 13, 14, 15, 16. So I had to figure this out because it's not clearly labeled on here. So we're gonna go 13, 14, 15, 16 with those buttons here, but that's that's the geek pie is all messed up like that. So, oh, that's why I was missing one. I was like, ah, I, I knew I was missing one. I forgot to put an encoder on this one right here. Okay. But um bum but um bum okay so let's go 13 and 14 which are gonna be up and down okay so this is going to be um and then I try to I try to make it so that I can put it through this section and not over so that I can tie it down cleaner later. So that's why I'm taking the time to see if I can fit it underneath the wires that I've already placed in here. So that's 13, and then this one is 14. Okay. Okay, 14, which is up. Or no, it's down. It goes up, down. So 14 is down. Okay, and then this one should be... Uh, f um, left right okay and then button number 16 here is right and that's the most important one the 16 is your exit button for games i also map it where like your um the um <clears throat> the start button if you hold down the start button it could also exit games but it's nice to have like a dedicated exit button so that way you don't have to think about it especially if you have guests over and they're trying to fumble around like what's the exit button um having hotkeys is, is helpful if you're in the know, but if not, it's nice to have things clearly labeled. All right, let me just do some quick, 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 quick wire management again, just to make sure it looks somewhat decently clean because I want to wire up the LEDs afterwards too. I wanna show you how, to, how I wire up my LEDs. Okay, so that's there. And then this is all going to just come up here all together with this one, like so. And I'm not even gonna, I might not even use that bottom one. I might just zip tie it together. So, okay, look. So I just, again, did two, three zip ties to tie all my wires together. And look how clean this looks now, guys. Doesn't that look clean? Much better, right? I mean, you can make this a little bit tighter. You can tie this down and you just need to tie all these wires. But everything else is like coming directly into your encoder now and it looks super good. So. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful in terms of wiring uh, the guide, but that's that's it for the buttons. We did the buttons, we did the yoke. The last thing you need to do for the premium mod um, is to actually um, wire this this one in here. So this one's a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do this right now. Walmart drive the price on a sit down Star Wars cabin is making it really tempting. And your birthday's next Friday. Well, happy birthday, Tony. Happy, happy birthday and treat yourself to the best arcade one up ever made the star wars cab and anybody who's uh who's gotten it i'd say definitely would consider it in their in their top top three and the modding potential i mean some people are curious but like you can do so much with the yoke it's it's the best controller 
ever made by Arcade One Up because it can be a racing cab, it can be a shooting cab, it can be a flying cab, it can be a Star Wars cab, it could even, if you wanted to, it could play pinball. I have, I have, I play pinball with the yoke and it's mightily fun. So it's super, super fun. Clean like a mother, deputy. <laughs> Bobby's probably still sleeping. So, <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, in my mod kit, and this is again for what I provide, um, I provided a uh, some. These are kind of smaller encoder connections, and the uh, and they they are plugged into this three pin JST connector here. And the way I have it labeled is I have one red and two blacks for each of these that are going to go in the potentiometers here. Okay. Um, so the um, the uh, the red pots or the red wires the pots here it goes the top one is going to be your x axis and this one on the left is going to be your y axis uh, you can see if you move the yoke or the the button that's how it would work but the ground for this top one is going to be this one on the far right okay so that's the red one there and then what you want to do is this is the red one which is wired into this yellow wire here take the next one that's in the middle the the, I'm sorry, I'm going to do it here. So this yellow wire is the red ground. This one in the middle is going to go to the middle wire there. And then this one is going to go to the last one. And I, I think I just did this off stream and I wasn't talking about it. But when you get when you get these, they, they are slightly are a little little loose when you um when you get them. And so what I what I do is I, I take a little bit of pliers and I just ply them down a little bit. So it provides a little extra, um, you know, tension or grip when you're plugging it over the terminal. Tony said that Code Mystics did the emulation. That makes sense. Code Mystics is awesome. So it makes sense that they did the emulation for Star Wars. Okay. You just put in the order with Walmart. <laughs> Hello, Stimulus. Congratulations, Kong. Congratulations, I will say. You will not be disappointed. And if you ever decide after you are fun having your fun playing with it in stock in its stock glory, which you can absolutely do, um, consider modding it because it gives uh, that much more play value to it too. Okay, all right. And so I'm doing the same thing. So oh, so for the the ground on this this y axis is on the bottom here. So the red wire is going to go on the bottom pot here. The red wire is going to go on the right wire on right terminal here. Okay, and I'm doing the same thing where the middle one is going to the middle and the one on the end is going on to the end. So definitely follow these instructions so that you can get this uh, analog joystick working properly. Okay, so now uh, there's three more slots that are open right here on our board. Okay, so the X axis is going to go into a, uh, I think it's called ARX, right? So you can see, I'll pull up the image of the Geek Pie one more time. See in the bit in the, the the right side of those those that six block there. That's the, all the analog input. So you have ARX, ARY, and ARZ. So the the X axis for this is going to go into ARX. The Y axis one that we just did is going to go into ARY. And cool enough, the these wires, I've actually already pre-wired everything for you. Um, so this wire is another potentiometer built inside. And this is actually going to be the twist motion. When you twist this, this motion, it actually registers as an analog signal too. So you could even use it as like a dial too. Like that's a pretty cool feature. Um, so this is going to plug into ARZ there. All right, and then the final button, the top button on the little thing, there's this little guy here. This is just another thing. Um, th for the Geek Pie to work properly, you need to actually press the set button on, on the Geek Pie. Let me pull up the Geek Pie encoder again. See in the top where it says set right next to K11 and K12? You have to plug something into that to enable it to activate mode two, which is the analog setting. So for, for by default, what I what I recommend is taking that little button on the top of your little little guy and plugging it into set just so that you can set the button. And then afterwards you can plug that into like volume switch. But that's unfortunately that like there's you you can't you can replace one of these buttons with that button on the top here, but there's not enough to have 17 buttons, unfortunately. So I wouldn't recommend leaving it as set once you have it turned on because afterwards you might press it and it might disable your analog settings. But that's it, guys. We finished wiring everything in. I could definitely spend more time cleaning up these wires and tying it down with my zip ties, but I'm going to save time and not do that. I'm going to plug it in. 
and and test it. So we, let's do some testing first, um, and then I will I will just really quickly. Uh, there's some other things you want to do to your board afterwards. This is the LED power strip where you just need to daisy chain all the power LED wires. I don't know if I'll go through that effort as well too, but I want to test this and make sure it's working before I do everything else. Okay. All right, let's do it, guys. The big test to make sure it's working. We're ready. We're ready to test to see if the yoke is working. Yes, you will mod it after you enjoy it stock. Good call. Definitely enjoy it as much as you can. And then when you're tired, you can you can mod it. All right. So I got my USB, micro USB cable here. Going to plug in to here. Okay. And going to flip this around carefully. Boom, boom, ba ya. All right, there it is. All right, let's plug it into this side PC that I have here that already has my playlist already loaded up. Okay, what's up Stardust? All right, so we don't need that anymore. Okay, I'm plugging it into my PC and let me share my screen on the second PC that I have this plugged into. Okay, we're going to share screen, share audio. Okay. All right. Let's make this big there. All right. So this is my desktop that I just plugged in the, um, the yoke to, this is kind of just a background that I have my star K playlist. So when you go to your start menu and you go to USB game controller, set up USB game controllers, this is where you want to go so that you can check everything. So right now I have the plugged in, it's registering as joystick V2. When you click on it, it's going to show here is kind of what the controller looks like. So at first, when I start moving the yoke, you'll notice that the actual um, yoke is not moving, but the buttons will start registering there. So there's a reason for that. Like I mentioned, you need to set the Geek Pie to mode two. So if you look on the on the bottom again, um, right now the mode isn't set, but if I press the the button that I was in the set button here, you can see a green light turn on. You see how this green light just turned on right there? And maybe I'll make this big right here so you guys can see it. Let's go. Oh, I can't make it big while I screen share. All right, well, well, you can see it. If I press the button, it's turning on this green light. And so when the green light is turned on on your Geek Pie, that's how you know mode two is turned on. So once I set that mode two on green, I'm going to remove the, the, the button that's in the set because I don't want to change it back to mode one while I'm playing a game if somebody accidentally presses it. I'm, unfortunately, that, that top button on the yoke or on the analog thing, I'm just going to plug it into volume one, but it's not going to do anything, unfortunately. That, that button doesn't do anything. So the button on the top won't work. But now it's set to mode two for the analog settings. All right. And now look, when I move it, See that yoke? See that cursor moving up and down? It's nice and smooth. There it is. That controller is ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculously awesome. Okay, so the, the stock pots on the y-axis go all the way to the top and bottom. But if you look, if I move it to the left and to the right, it doesn't touch the corners. So we have to calibrate that. But let's double check all our buttons first before we calibrate. So button number one is the bottom right. Button two is bottom left. Button three is top right. Button four is top left. Okay? And then... After the, um, then this is button five, which is bottom, button six, button seven, button eight, okay? And then we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And 16 exited because I have Joydy key set up as an exit button already. But um, yeah, Deputy, does the mode have to be reset after power loss? No. So the, the mode, rem it remembers whatever last mode it was set. So once you set it, set it and forget it. So it stays in mode two. You don't have to change it afterwards again. And you have to do that same thing if you were modding it with the, um, the outrun wheel. Um, you have to set it into mode two to allow the analog settings to work. But okay, our buttons are working. This is excellent. So everything, everything that we wired in was properly, again, button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Awesome. And the, the great thing about this, guys, is that the APAC was limited to, I think, 12 buttons on a player one side. You can now have 16 buttons all registering as one player. Why is this important? Because any emulation console games usually only allow you to use one controller at like to map as controller. So now you can map an entire like, uh, you know, PlayStation 2 controller with all the buttons, the analog access stuff. This actually registers as a controller too. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you guys this. Look, look at this. 
So the joystick is working. So you have your left, right. That's your X axis rotation up down is your Y rotation. Your Z rotation is this twist. Look at this guys. This is, this is working perfectly. Boom. Oh, and the other thing I didn't check right here. So volume switch your Z axis is is volume is down and up and you can actually see it in the corner see how i'm holding down the volume down button and the volume up button i actually have already mapped my joy to key profile to have this volume switch on the top moving my bet by pc volume you see it's already working there so this is again by default this is how i mapped my playlist so if you follow this exact same setup that i did my playlist will be working where this is your exit button is escape this will already be mapped as your volume button but check it out but we do need to calibrate not only this but we also need to calibrate the x-axis so let me let me calibrate that and show you guys how to do that right now so we're going to go to settings and calibrate and so we're going to go to calibration device wizard leave the yoke in the center and now we're going to move the yoke in full circle so i'm going to move it all the way to the right and then up and move it to the all the way to the to the right and down up so i'm kind of moving the cursor in full circle so i'm going I'm pulling back all the way to the right and then down so we're going in full circles full circles like this all right sorry somebody's calling me nope all right so once you do that, hit the next button, that should be calibrated. And then we're going to calibrate the actual, um, this one too, so that the range goes all the way down. So the Z axis was the um, volume switch. So we did the Z axis there. That's next. The X rotation is the uh, this, so all the way down to the right. So you're just moving the, um, the joystick to the left and to the right for the X rotation. So that's X rotation there. Hit next. Then Y rotation is up and down. So we got up and down. So this is going to help calibrate it so it goes all the way to the ends. Okay. Next. And then the last one is Z rotation, which is a twist. So you twist this and it goes all the way up and down. I love this controller, like the, the little four axis controller. And it works perfectly with the Geek Pie. So now look, now my range is a lot bigger with everything. And I still have my twist axis. So everything is calibrated. I can move this all the way to the end. So definitely make sure you calibrate your yoke and hit apply before you do anything else with testing. So good news. We did it, guys. First, first thing. Okay, so let me let me flip this back over and just show you guys. Um, like just an example of how to wire a couple of the LEDs. I won't go the whole thing, um, but I, I definitely want to just show you guys. So your power wire harness, I get this from DIY Retro. I highly recommend it. There's lots of ways you can power stuff. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen and go back to being big. Okay, and let's go back to being big there. Okay, you guys can hopefully see that. Okay, um, so the... Um, Oh, it's a little bit fuzzy now. Hopefully it gets better. Okay. Um, so the power wire harness, again, I highly recommend this. This has a 12 volt connection here at the end, which I'm just going to put off to the side. And then it has positive yellows and negative blacks. And all you need to do is just daisy chain these little connections on each of your LEDs. And to test it, I highly recommend plugging in this while you do it. Um, it's 12 volt power isn't going to hurt you if you touch it. So you can absolutely touch it and not have any issues with it. So... Let me get a 12 volt adapter here and plug it in. Okay, so I'm going to plug in a 12 volt uh, a plug into this while I do my testing. And we're going to just start daisy chaining and wiring up. So you start with the first two. I'm just going to touch it. And if it, if it works, that's how you want to um, you know, test it and then just tie it down. If it doesn't work, all you need to do is just flip the left and the right. I'm pretty much just guessing. It's like 50-50. Like if, it, if, I if I touch it and it doesn't work like this way, so I know you can't see that on camera, then I just swap it and I move it to the other side and then it should work. Okay, so this is, you can see the, the white buttons that are lit up there. Let me just do a few more so you guys can see it. I might even be able to do all of them. So let's see, okay, so that's wired in. That's the yellow. It's like, I might have to do this anyways. Might as well just do it. All right, this goes pretty quick. It's a guessing game. Can I get it? Can I get it wired? All right, that's my white. And then sometimes these LED bulbs burn out too. So, I mean, they should be okay running. They're designed to run, but, you know, in case they ever they burn out, they do have replacements or, you know, especially if you get a kit from me, let me know. I, I have some replacement bulbs I can send too. All right. One, two. All right. You guys have already been waiting this long. You guys can wait another minute and have me wire this all up so you can see it in, a, in its light, lit up glory, right? 
let's just finish this while we're doing it. I thought it was going to take a while, but this use the the thing that takes the most time is actually like tying everything down, like doing the actual wiring portion is okay. So uh, if you have a premium mod, by the way, too, especially or a basic mod, um, these don't the, this middle one right here doesn't reach quite all the way across. So I leave this middle one blank and just kind of tie it down to this portion right here, and I skip it and then I go to the next one over here. Okay. All right, so we're going to go all the way across and skip it and then plug this into this. Okay, that is that one. All right, almost done, almost done, almost done. Just three more buttons. That lit up, okay. That's lit up. So I, I daisy chain where I go these two, these three, then out to the side and back across. Then I do these bottom ones. Then I do this one on the outside. OK, one, two. One, two. All right, that's lit up. Ooh, and then I got to show you guys how I um how I added my, my graphics, too. I think I have a sample of my graphics here somewhere. All right. All right, two more buttons. Two more buttons, and then you'll see it, and it's lit up. It's glory. So cool. I won't cut everything up, because that'll take time. You have to cut cut the graphics. All right, here's the last one. One, two. Boom, 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 boom. That lit up. All right, there it is. OK. And so uh, I think these are daisy chain. I think there's like 15 wires. But once you finish the end, you could just tie it off. Or if you're not, if you know you're not going to be using it for anything else and everything else works, you can just cut off the excess and you know save it for a future project or something else if you want to daisy chain it. All right, you ready? Ready to see this? This is a, a stock uh, yoke that I that I modded using a Geek Pie Stardust. So I I think the popular thing to do is ask kids. <laughs> All right. Oh, Tony was asking, can this play Robotron? You know, I have to admit, I've never played Robotron, so I don't know. But it, it can play pretty much uh, anything if you if you if you want to map it to it. But look at that, lit up beautifully. Boom! All the LEDs are there, nice and clean. Oh, it looks so good. So good. All right. Let me see. Do I have a sample? Okay. Let me tell you, let me show you some, some of my sample button graphics that I have. Okay. So part of, part of the led experience too, is adding in these buttons. So I have start and coin buttons that I put into these logos here, but I have these giant select and back buttons. And then I write an Arabesh, which is a star Wars language, like may the force be with you or custom things. And here's the custom radar button, but let's just do a sample of, of cutting up some of these graphics so you can see them and what they look like because they it looks that much better with the button graphics installed so i'm going to install the radar button and then the start and select button just so you can see what it looks like all lit up and it looks really cool and then the arabesque looks really cool too but that takes time but so essentially i'm just taking the uh the paper it's just printed on regular photo paper and the light shines through really well on these too so there so that's the that's the graphic for the radar okay and then here's the start and select button. So I'm going to cut this through. Just uh, you know, just take scissors, take your time, cut exactly to the edges. I've I've measured these perfectly to fit underneath the buttons. And uh, you know, if you wanted to, you could always design your own logos too. Uh, you know, these are just again something that I put together that people like. But I, I've seen some really cool customs and people doing their own things too. So definitely encourage you guys to, if you want a different design, you could always design your own. I don't know if I have like template. I mean, I guess I could send a template too if you guys really wanted to see it. But here are the button graphics. So that's the back button. And here's the select button. So let's just do these three. You can see what it looks like. Cutting through. This is where I think somebody was mentioning they had a cry cut afterwards, right? Somebody needs to get that cry cut. Was that Deb, you deputy? And if you can just do this really quickly, pop, boom, done. No need to like cut. And I used to like cut and I used to be like, oh no, I left a little white spot in there. But now I'm like, eh, the edges are okay. All right. So here I have three little buttons done. Let's do let's do my Kongs or Us logo too. I feel like I'm like, I'm just gonna do this one, and then I end up doing all of them. But I wanna I wanna show you guys what one of these Arabesh things look like too. Because it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Super simple. You just cut it, install. 
All right, these are the four buttons that we're going to install the little graphics. So I recommend using like not a small flathead if you have it, but it might damage the sides. I use a watch knife. So this is a watch knife that has like a little like it's a flat end, but it's not sharp. So when you pull stuff up and it doesn't damage anything. So let's start with the, the so you just kind of pop it open and then the um, the square portion of the of, of the graphics should just pop out. Okay, I popped it out, but the whole thing popped out. So I'm trying to get it where it's just the, the green part. Oh no, the whole thing popped out. Okay, <laughs> normally the whole thing doesn't pop out. This is what happens on live YouTube. It doesn't ever work out to plan, but okay. So if the whole thing pops out, that's fine. We might have to take off the back, um, but normally the, um, the green part just pops off on its own and I can put the graphic inside, but now it's being a butt. All right, there. Okay, there it is. So I, I pulled off the, the top part of the um of the, the graphic and I'm going to stick my radar graphic in here. You can put it here, you can put it inside um, and just snap it back down. That's it, and that's the button graphic. All right, let's see if I can reinstall uh, this without, uh, I might have to take apart the whole thing to reinstall it. Why'd you have to be a butt? Stinky, stinky, stinky thing. All right, let's go. Going to reinstall it, it should be pretty quick. Just stick it in, put it down. All right, and then we can put this back in, all right. There it is. Okay, look, look at that button radar graphic looking good, right? Looking good. Pop this off. Oh, I don't know where all my other button graphics went. Did I drop them? Oh, that's what I get for like, where did they go? Oh, there they go. All right, so we have our Kongs R Us logo that's going to go here. So this is my Kongs R Us logo in Arabesh. It's going to go underneath this. I like to somewhat brand. Look at that, isn't that cool? Everything's shining through. And the back and select button, I think these actually look the best. So this big red button, it's like when you're in your game menu, it's, it's, it's a select, it says select there. And then that way when you press the game, you know exactly what it says. So you can kind of see it lit up there. It says select, kind of it lights up really nicely. So, I mean, it's super simple. You just pop it open, put the graphic in, done boom this is the back button so uh, i have this as select and back but you could also use the yoke to navigate but look at that guys boom button graphics it makes a huge difference so like once you get everything in here it looks awesome so i'm not going to do the rest of the buttons but you guys get the hang of it so that's how you install buttons and the led graphics all too easy <laughs> all too easy so yeah this is this is the simple thing oh and I forgot that my thing is dropping a little bit. So, all right, you can see me. You can see that. Cool, cool, cool. All right, guys. Um, the last thing, I think there's one other thing I need to show you guys. Uh, yeah, uh, Clement, this is on YouTube as well. So you can definitely find this on my YouTube channel. So it's it's not only in, in my Facebook group. So you can find it on, on YouTube. Um, I want to show you guys the last thing you really need to do uh, to complete my version of the commission okay and this is important because i'm going to unplug the, the leds i'm going to unplug this from the computer um is that my one of the cool things that i've been able to do with my mods is is install an inlet power module switch to the back and use the stock power switch to be able to turn your cab off and on so to do that you need to wire in um you know a cable into this power switch here and it's it's uh i want to show you guys how to do that because that this is probably the most important part if you want to complete the cab using this you, you don't have to do this as a step but i highly recommend it i mean i recommend it if you're using it with my mod but definitely pay attention to this portion right here okay so let me let me just take a, a zip tie where my zip ties go are they down here now okay Oh, I just dropped all my zip ties on the floor. <laughs> I'll have to clean it up later. Okay, going to just zip tie some of these cables back so I have space here so you guys can see what's going on over here. So I'm just going to kind of take all these cables, all these little wires and just do a quick tie down just to kind of get stuff out of the way. All right. All right, so what we're doing is like, see, this is the stock power switch here, okay? And then the stock cable is coming out of here. This is already plugged in. I just tied this off. We're not gonna be using this at all. We're gonna be using the two terminals that are right underneath here, and we're gonna wire it into some 12 gauge wires. So in, in my kits that I provide, I provide this here, which is a, an inlet module switch, a surge protector, and this wire 
that's already wired that's going to plug into your inlet module switch and turn it turn it on so essentially we're creating a remote switch to turn your surge protector on inside your cab so on one end this is going to go into the inlet module switch on the other end i have these pre uh crimped small terminals that are heat shrink that are going to go into this section right here so you have to pay attention doing this and make sure it, it's secure because if it's not secure all the power in your cab is running through these two wires and into this section and if it's not secure you know and it falls off it could break um so i this is the place where i i definitely recommend if you're doing this you need to get zip ties and these um these holders so that you can add extra support and not just plug it in and have it hanging. So I like to add in extra ties on top of each of the little switches. So one above this switch right here. So that's one, I'm gonna do three of them. I'm gonna do one above the second switch here, which is the volume switch here, okay? And then I'm gonna do a third one right here on the center because I have the wire from the geek pie. I have the wire from the led and then I have the wire from the power that are all going to combine together in one kind of out section. Okay. So let's plug it into here. Okay. So these are my three zip tie holders extensions. Okay. And so, and to prep this wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in and then I'm going to bend it down and across this way and zip tie it down. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to bend this connection down like a U, kind of where the there's a heat shrink tubing there, right where the heat shrink tubing ends. So I can make a little U shape like that. Okay. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is right where like where that U bend is, I'm gonna make a right angle bend so I can start to zip tie it down along the the ties that I just had. Okay. So once you do this, then you can start um plugging it in. And again, these are just small uh, connections that are going to go into the two terminals. So just be careful when you're plugging it in and, and don't force it, but kind of like wiggle it in, make sure that it's it's completely in and not just sitting on top of the, um, the heat shrink tube. Uh, you can remove the geek pie if you're having trouble with this, but make sure that you try to uh, make sure that it's a secure fit when you're plugging it in. So I can't stress this enough. This is electricity. If you're not comfortable doing this at all, then you know you could even skip doing the inlet module switch, but this is what you need to do to get the um, the um, stock power switch working. All right, so now I, I, I securely plug those two things in, and then I'm going to zip tie this to this first one. And again, these zip ties help secure it in place so that you don't have any anything snagging or pulling on it while, while you're playing the game or doing anything else or moving it around. So this is important to make sure you secure it down after you plug it in and not just plug it in and, and leave it hanging. Okay, so that's one, tie that down tight. Okay, here's two, got my other one. And to take a little knife so I can grab this. And again, zip, don't be shy about using zip ties, guys. You can use as many as you feel comfortable with. It doesn't matter. Use them all if you can. All right, and then we're going to, lastly, okay, so I had I had my Geek Pie and my, um, my LED buttons. They're kind of coming over here. So I'm going to zip tie these all together, actually. So they, they kind of tie together in one big thing. So I use them for extra support as well. Okay. And since there's so many wires, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two of them because there's three of them plugged into that one thing. And I don't want them to snag or feel like they're being snagged. Okay. There we go. All right. So now look, so now when I'm pulling this, it's it's pulling pressure on on this and not this connection here. So this is how you do the final connection for the power. And then afterwards, I just continue to use as many zip ties as I can just to kind of get a couple of these nice and clean um, and secure it all together. And now I have my power connections coming out of here, my Geek Pie and the LEDs all coming out of this section here. And the panel is done now. Um, the other the other thing that I personally do, since these connections here are a little bit loose, you can see they kind of bend. I actually use a soldering iron and I actually solder these portions down too. Um, but that's just optional. Like if you if you squeeze it down and you move it enough, like I have a soldering iron like right next to me here that I'll, I'll take a soldering iron and actually use some solder to make sure these stay on securely as well. So that's an extra step that I personally do. Um, you don't have to, but that's just another precaution that you know I want to make sure it's secure and doesn't move around and fall off when I do it. All right, that's the cab. Let's turn it on. Let's do some gameplay. I've already been at this for like an hour and 42 minutes. I can't believe it. it's probably one of my longest live modding streams, but I had to do this anyways. 
Hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching. But let's do let's finish it off with some gameplay. Let's test it out. I want to make sure show you guys some some goodies on everything you can do. Let me know if you have any requests for any particular game you want to see. Let's light it up. Let's pull it in. Cool. Cool. Okay. Let's plug it in this way. Get this come in this way. You haven't autographed the panel yet. It's not done. done. It's Ricky. Ricky always tells me I should sign and autograph my panel. So <laughs> I, I, I don't think I have that notor no, um, that reputation to to sign autograph. It's not worth anything, Ricky. I would devalue it if I signed it. Okay, share screen, share audio. Here we go. All right. You're a funny guy. You're a funny guy. All right, there we go. So there's the screen. <laughs> stun runner. Oh, we can do some stun runner. Yes, I love it. That's a great suggestion. All right, so here is the final uh, look at my Starcade playlist 2.0. Runs off a of PC. I have PC tutorials on how to set this up, but I'll show you guys a demo of a big box. Hopefully, it's not too crazy loud. Okay. All right. Whoops. 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 I'm trying to get to my headphones. Is it playing? All right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Can you guys give me a thumbs up? Can you hear me? I don't know. I can't hear the audio from the actual game, so I don't know if it's playing or not. But um, I have my speakers here. But here is my playlist. I'm using the yoke, as you can see, to kind of move through my playlist. I have racing, Mario Kart, classic games. Um, something just dropped. I got a ride and shoot playlist. So here's where Sunrunner is. Let's go into my ride and shoot playlist. I can hit the trigger to press the button, or I can press the select button. So let's go into Stun Runner. Like you're saying, I know it's have. Oh, we can play some Afterburner. Yes, we can do some Afterburner. All right, so Stun Runner. So I press the select button. It's going to jump into the playlist. I'm excited. Yeah, okay, you have a thumbs up. You can hear me okay. Cool. And everything is, is pre mapped for the most part. So again, I as long as you follow along, this is uh, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so we'll drop in some credits. So I have my coin button right here. So see, I'm editing some coins. Press the start button. And we're going simple. Look at that, right? Got the scan lines on this particular version. That looks pretty cool. And then I've already set some of the analog settings to to kind of work for the most part. I could I should probably be watching the screen on my left because that's the actual live screen. The one on um, front of me is a little bit behind. So I'm gonna be looking to the left, guys, while I play. All right, the stun runner. I've I've actually been I've wanted to make a stun runner cab. So I don't know if I'll do it, but like I kind of want to make one. This has always been one of my favorite games. Super fun. All right, Boost Boulevard. All right, we got it. Now we can start shooting. Pew 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 pew. Boost pad increase speed. Pew pew pew. Pew pew pew. pew. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. I'm not great at any of these games. I remember playing this and like being so enamored with it because I thought it was so cool. I used to make like Legos that look like the Sunrunner sh ship because I thought it was so cool the way that it looked. Wee hoo! Yeah, so cool. All right, so that's that's some sample gameplay. I'm not I'm not great at it. And then when you want to exit a game, you just hit the exit button right here. Boom, exits back into your playlist, and then you're ready to go to your next thing. So you back menu, and let's do some Afterburner, right? So I have flying games. You want to see Afterburner Climax or the original Afterburner? Afterburner 2? Let's do Afterburner 2. All right, Afterburner 2. Yeah, this is a fun game. Bum, bum, bum. You could do any, like the yoke is so much fun. It's like the best controller. All right, very nice job on this video. Appreciate all the hard work and you put in. Can't wait to get my mod started. Yeah, thanks for joining, man. So yeah, press start, play. Like I said, like everything, I didn't have to configure anything else on the Geek Pie. Once you follow this exact kind of tutorial of how I wired everything in, um, you once you like, I have instructions on my installing my playlist as well. Um, 
that can get you started. But yeah, like everything is is pre mapped and working and ready to go. Fire, fire, fire! We can afterburner. Boosh. I might need to reverse my y axis on this. Is it is it opposite? Uh oh. This is one of the things where I play games and I'm not sure if the controls are mapped. I gotta see if my y axis is inverse. Up, down, up. Okay, up. Okay, it is. It's working right. Yeah, I was just, I was not. I'm just not great at games. I just blow up when I'm when I'm <laughs> when I play games. I play games to test them to see if they work. I don't play games to actually be good at them. So I I don't think I've ever been great at these games, especially games like this, where they're like, now that I don't have to put arcade quarters in games, <laughs> I'm just I'm just playing just to see if they work. But like like this is me just testing. I have no idea how to get get actual real points in this game on Afterburner at all. But that's that. I want to see. I want to see if Afterburner Climax will work. With the, I, I don't remember if I needed to do something specifically with Afterburner Climax. So let me see if it'll work. Um, all right, let's go to let's go to Afterburner. I'm I'm hoping this works right off the bat. Uh, if it doesn't, then I have to double check. But this is a fun game as well. Afterburner Climax, super good. Lies. Ricky says, I'm good at Street Fighter. I am decent at Street Fighter. I play Marvel vs. Capcom. My arcade went up cab like pretty much every night. I finally made it to purple tier, so I'm level 12 now. So I'm ranked like number between 50 and 60 on arcade one up. Yeah. So I'm pretty, pretty decent at, at Marvel vs. Capcom. You tore it up in that Dirk game too. What's a Dirk? Oh, Dirk. Dirk uh, Dragon's there too. Yeah. John Connor and T2. Oh, I could play some T2 later. That'd be fun. All right, press the start button. Oh, all right, I think it's working. Start button. Arcade. Yes. Yeah, check this out, guys. Like, you got your F14 Tomcat. You got uh, the Super Hornet. Oh, you always got to go Tomcat. Like, I don't know. It's just it's just too iconic, right? Dun 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 dun. Yeah, I was decent at Dragon Slayer too because it's like a rhythm game and it almost like was like DDR and I used to be pretty good at DDR. All right, but let's start button to skip. Check this. Afterburner 2 is so bad. Look at the graphics on the PS3 port version, guys. It's so cool. You can shoot missiles. You can go into advanced mode. You press this button, it goes into climax mode. Boom. Yeah, I'm again. I'm not great at these games. I actually don't even know what I'm shooting at. I sh I sh if I played Star Fox 64, which is another really cool game, like actually that that game is like one of my surprise gems on here. Like Star Fox 64 is a really fun game. I used to be really good at, and it's really fun to play on the yoke because I remember all the little secrets to do. So that's fun. Can I make a DDR arcade? That might be something in my potential future. All right, so exiting that. Let's go into some shooters. So we did some flying games. We did a racing game. I want to show you guys, like, you can do Star Wars games, obviously, but you can do gun games, classic. You can play shooters with the yoke. Essentially, that's what the game was. So let's do T2. You want to do T2? Terminator 2, during the day. Boom. Let's do some T2. Oh, John Connor played Afterburner in the arcade on T2. It is the newest Afterburner. Ah, good call. I need to. I need to go remember me some some um, some Terminator 2 and how he how he hacked into that that ATM machine so we can get quarters to play games. Right. <laughs> that was that was pretty sweet technology for the time. Los Angeles. Boom 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 boom. I never kind of understood like this this game is T2 but the the actual gameplay is of the post apocalyptic world so like was this like just to do the demo of the, like the beginning of the movie where they're actually fighting these guys and then there's like nothing else like well I guess later on on the later stages it actually goes into um you know him looking like actual Arnold Schwarzenegger but sometimes I don't play this game long enough to get to those other stages. So I always kind of forget. I guess this is like following the movie where it's um it starts off here and then it goes to the other stages. But I don't think I've played this game long enough to get past this stage. <laughs> again, this is me again. I don't I don't play these games to actually play them. I just I play them to make sure that they work. And then in other words like I never get past this one stage. And I think in the arcade I never got past the stage either. I never had enough quarters to play this game long enough to get past it. But yeah, do you actually get to fight 
the actual T1000 in this game. I should sit down and play this game so that it actually gets through. It is a fun game. It's a very iconic rail shooter game. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right. That's it for some demo, guys. I'm almost, I've been at this for almost two hours. Does anybody have any last requests they'd like to see before? Kind of really cool games, Steel, Gunner, Operation Wolf. Any, any, let me know if there's any last questions before I end the stream. I will do one last demo of something. Um, oh, I should probably do some Star Wars games, huh? But if, if I do Star Wars, YouTube will probably demonetize me. Um, not that it's all about the monetization. It's about doing what's right. But I mean, we can play some Star Wars games. I could turn off the audio and then we can do it. Um, but yeah, these are all my Star Wars games on here. Pretty cool. Oh, tank games. Tank games are awesome. You can do Battle Zone. You can do some of the other tank games. I can play Virtual on on here. Shmups. I have some Raiden games on here that are pretty fun. Oh, Macross, Ricky. We can play some Macross. All right, I have to do this. More skin. You want to see more skin, Ricky? There you go. You can see more of my neck. Macross is my. It's like my number one. If you see all the toys behind me, and I have, I made a Macross cab. I had to put Macross on the actual arcade too, so that this is a really fun shmup. If you've not played the Macross arcade shmup, it is super fun. But up, up, so you can play shmups on here too. It's not the best, but I mean, it's still fun to play. It's probably not most ideal because the only bad thing is like you know, since like the the analog, the yoke is it's essentially like a giant stick. So like you have to move it super far in order for it to kind of register. So it looks extreme, and people are like, "Oh, is there input lag because you're moving it and it's not moving the stick as much?" Uh, no, it's just because you have to make extreme movements for it to move the same distance you would a regular joystick so that's why the movements look extreme when you're playing games it's not designed for but otherwise for games it is designed for it works perfect but this is the macross arcade game yes deputy says years ago when you're a regional manager for gnc you got to meet arnold schwarzenegger that's awesome man you got to meet the terminator the t2 guy that's cool thanks for sharing all right, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I'm probably going to end the stream here. Say it's up. Thank you guys so much for checking it out. If you guys have more questions about modding your arcade one-up Star Wars machine, if you're interested in doing this exact thing I did, uh, feel free to join my Facebook group. I have more information on getting a mod kit. I have limited numbers of them. I'm not going to be doing this forever. Um, so this is just kind of like a, 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 the most plug and play kit that I can provide. But you can absolutely do this mod yourself um, as much as you want to. So I really appreciate everybody that's been checking out. <laughs> wow, you suck hard at this. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, I suck hard at life too, not like you. You, but I uh, appreciate you guys checking it out and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching. See ya.